can you beat Lost City with only Garden Warfare plants? To be honest, I don't want to, as there are 32 levels in this world. Game. You're doing this on purpose now. And to add to the chaos, out of these 32 levels, half of them are just conveyor levels that only have lost city plants. What type of non-inclusive racism is this game? You're telling me Pea Shooter can't go play with Red Stinger because of the color of his skin. But anyway, this world is already taking up enough time. So on day one... Whoa! Welcome to the jungle, Lost City. This is it, Penny. We found it. Ignoring Dave's awful stand-up routine, the Lost City has its own funky-looking tiles, featuring a weird-looking plug socket. However, placing plants on these tiles actually activates their mystical Mayan powers. Think of these as just having an extra sunflower on the lawn once in use, which really helps our sun economy during the beginning of levels. However, as you'll find out later, the game seems to also realize this and decides to send up 10 billion zombies every second. But we're not at that stage yet, so making use of our bonus sun, we started the level just like any other world and made use of Pea Shooter and Torchwood taking down the zombie horde. We flew through day one, which unlocked Red Stinger. Now, I have received a lot of comments from my wonderful fans talking about how Red Stinger is basically Rose from Garden Warfare 2. I don't know if I'm blind, but these guys are not the same. This plan clearly isn't this plan. I know you guys want to see more cool character reveals, but come on. That is a long stretch. But it didn't matter anyway, because in day two, a few Red Stingers forced their way onto the pitch. These two guys seem like they regret it. But whilst they're already here, I can go over what they do literally nothing. Red Stinger's concept is kind of strange, with it changing its attacking style the closer up the field it's planted. Not that I cared, because personally I can't place him. So once again, I primarily used pea shooters to be the level. However, everything came to a stop when we arrived at our first conveyor level. You're probably sick of me talking about these by now, but... You think I want to talk about these airport luggage looking lunatics? This level gives us broken vase pots and the red spider. So unfortunately we moved on to day four, where Penny- Caution user Dave, I detect a zombie with a shovel. Are you serious right now? I know, telekinesis. Try again, Dave. I know. AK-47. As mentioned by Penny, this shovel dude blocks any front-facing attacks, such as pea shooters peas. And as demonstrated by this walnut, yeah, that might be a problem. Instead of consuming my plants, the shovel face throws it back and continues to shuffle across my lawn. The only way to counter them is by using projectile plants, and luckily with Colonel Corn being a part of the Garden Warfare team, he's able to stop the shovel zombie in his trap. Parachute rain. Okay. I guess since these guys are now here, the parachute zombies fall from the sky and just sit there. Picture a crap bungee zombie who just stares at your plants in a very non-consensual way. Something I will say about the parachute zombies though, is after checking up on my sunflower garden, they actually decide to stay and eat their way through my plants, which kind of defeats the point of me building up a strong defense if they just decide to spawn over here instead. The zombies did overpower the corns in some areas, but we beat the level anyway and moved on to day five. It might be possible. I know I've already brought up these racist levels, only including their world allocated plants. I'm still working on the name. So any future levels in this world that has the same format, I'm just gonna skip. Day six forces this orange bagpipe into my loadout. So we'll just have to ignore him whilst placing down our pea shooters. But then I forgot this guy existed. So placing down a cactus, he still shoveled him out of the ground. How do you perfectly shovel out every spike in one scoop, dude? Get rid of this guy, Chomper. Bloody stupid. What in the trick shot bullshit was you going for, Chomper? What was that called? The 360 no chomp. It's really finicky to take down this dude with never knowing if Chomper will get a bite in before the Shovel Man decides to throw him away. And you'd think I'd know when to place Chomper to take out Shovel Man. But no. He three-piece combos my Chomper army like they're nothing. What is wrong with you guys? The level ended, giving us the sentient bagpipes. But I was kind of put off listening to this Chomper chew on his food. Leave that little guy alone. What you gonna do if I don't? <laughs> Day seven. Who? Oh, you. You don't even look like you're from this world. This parasol zombie seems to be the long-lost sister of the digger zombie, as she blocks projectiles like Colonel Corn and can only be shot at from the front. You guys are like two peas in a fire pod because you make me want to burn myself. Since these two zombies go against each other with what they can counter against, I decided to use something neither of them could counter. Don't let the bombies trample the foul. Wait, hold, hold on, I haven't chosen my- 
plants. So it seems like in Lost City, they don't even correctly tell you the objectives. This is clearly a survive with the given plants level, but no, because the racist city is too proud, they just assume you want to use these plants anyway. So as it's literally impossible, day nine. Ugh. So you're telling me there's a chance? No, there is no chance. Day 10, finally something I can play. This little plus symbol on the middle of the lawn made me want to plant my sunflowers here, which proved to be a bad decision because they ate everything. I had to hold out long enough just to spawn the last wave and let my mowers take out the zombies as my plants are just too weak to cause any real damage against the amount of zombies spawning in. We unlocked the spiky mango and... Fly. If it wasn't already hard enough to take out the hundreds of zombies, some of them now take an uber to make it further down the lawn. Combine this with the skydivers, endless zombie swarms, and beauty and the bitch, I managed to barely make it through, and I'm as shocked as he is. Day 12. 5,000 sun? How much is your rent? Luckily, the level had sun tiles scattered everywhere. However, with this ginormous amount of sun I'm able to make, the level decides I should face a ginormous zombie. And after barely getting by the first one, the game then says, well, why not two more? This was only possible with Chompa, with having to cycle through my cheap plants for Mr. Gargantua to smash while Chompa eats him. We're only on day 12, and the difficulty of these levels is already ramping up way faster than the previous worlds. Day 13. You know the drill. Day 14. Oh, at least they've actually labeled it correctly this time. Who have we got? Sorry, but I have access to seven seed slots, and you only chose to bring three plants. What am I supposed to do? Sunflower them to death? Day 15. Protect Bagpipe Man. Well, in all honesty, I'd rather see this burnt bull sack be eaten alive. I didn't realize how much Chompa would be carrying us in this world, as he doesn't really care where the zombies came from or what they look like. He'll eat anything that has a face. Take notes, racist city. We get given another map, and I'm pretty sure the zombies already tried this before back in Pirate Seas. But nope, Dave is just as stupid as last time. When have big red X's ever been bad? I will keep doing this until he actually finds the treasure. Come here seeking adventure, have you? I wish someone would carry me in a tiny house. What? Day 16. What a fine selection of plans! Alert user Dave, my senses sense incoming imposters. Oh. I mean importers, which have the ability to go camping on the lawn. Not much of a threat, are they? However, it seems like they've brought the whole family with them, as over time, different zombies begin to walk out of the tent until the tent is completely destroyed. With the sun tiles being quite far up, I had to sacrifice a lot of my sun producers, meaning I was extremely underpowered against huge waves of zombies. However, with a single row of chompers, we made it all the way to the end and used the mowers to clear out the leftovers. It seems like in every world we take on, there's always a different garden warfare plant that overpowers every zombie. But my fun was cut short, where in day 8, Oh. Look guys, purple plants. What? You're not impressed? No, nor am I. The purple circle was forced into our plant selection for day 19. And look at the state of this gameplay. Symmetry has been thrown out of the window. I'm fighting for my life to make it through these levels. To add to the 50 things I have to control, we now have whole ass family setting up camp, which seem to all have 19 kids each as they just don't stop coming. By using Cactus and Chomper, we're able to barely make it out with only a few mowers remaining, rewarding us with me after realizing this world sucks. Z for zombies. With a lot of the sun tiles being close together, I placed my sunflowers in rows across most of them, and then literally just called Cactus City. As much as I joke about these dudes, they appear to be as powerful as like, one pea shooter and a half. Regardless, we wiped out the last family on the campsite and received the mother's necklace from inside the tent. Lucky me. Look, Penny, a shiny whiny doodah. Do you have no guilt? Day 21. Ah, no intro. Okay, who's on the conveyor belt this time? What? Okay, this world is taking the piss. What am I even looking at? This is a nightmare blunt rotation. This fat frog looks like he'll just eat everyone else. So in day 22... Oh. What are those things? Beware, user Dave. I detect trap tiles. They are triggered when zombies step on them. And stuff. Well, thanks for the explanation, Penny, but I think I'll manage with my Garden Warfare team. <coughs> well... Piss. Okay, so this level looks basically impossible to beat, considering none of these guys are God and Warfare slash BFN plants, since some of you guys are forgetting they are included in this challenge. However, as mentioned way back in ancient Egypt, Iceberg Lettuce is actually an unreleased character for Battle for Neighborville, but it never came out because the game fell off and died. Thank you, old Brando. So technically, since they're part of the team, we can use them. And that's great and everything, but... 
How is that even going to help us beat the entire level? Well, as Penny brought up in the beginning, these tiles actually cause on-screen boulders or flame waves to kill anything in that column or row. So it got me thinking, with some precision and careful timing, I could theoretically only use Iceberg Lettuce to beat this level, despite the uber flies and gargantuas. With that being said, I placed Iceberg Lettuce on the first boulder tile to take out this column of zombies, and I was already concerned with how long it took for the Iceberg Lettuce to regenerate. So letting the zombies travel halfway up the lawn, I placed the second lettuce to deploy boulder number two, which is when these fast flying flies appeared. But just in the nick of time, I managed to regenerate iceberg lettuce and place it at the back tile to take them out. But then all of a sudden, parachute zombies appeared, as well as the dragonflies, which needed me to carefully wait for the zombies to sync up for the boulder to roll over everything. I was shocked how far I was actually getting making it through. But then the level deployed the gargantuas. However, I noticed that they came out on the first and fifth lane, where the fire tiles were located. So by timing a boulder as soon as they step on these tiles, it should hypothetically insta-kill them, which actually worked, leaving me to only have to deal with this sad flag zombie. And with the last dragonfly eliminated, we beat the whole of day 22 with only iceberg lettuce. Day 23 seemed like everything was normal at first. But then, holy moly, Indiana Jones! These guys are essentially just reskinned rope swingers from the pirate seas. So by just tracking them with a chomper, they weren't too much of a pain to deal with. But that's when they deployed a gargantua on flag one. So I had to restart multiple times. I went back to the classic Snapdragon strat, which lasted all but two oh. minutes, and used the plant cycle system to store the Gargantua whilst Chomper eats his lunch. However, with my lawnmowers being taken out, I had to try once again, but this time with Nightcap. With even considering to use Nightcap, I was going to have to use a lot more sun, so I placed some sunflowers on the further up tiles to increase production, and as zombies got closer to eating Nightcap, they actually activated an ability I've never seen before, allowing zombies to phase through them without being eaten. So with this mechanic, I I didn't have to worry about the gargantuas destroying these expensive ass plants, and managed to barely hold out until the end. Day 24, save Dave's flowers! And with the parachute zombies appearing halfway down the lawn, it made this objective way harder than I thought. So to defend the flowers, I used chompers whilst also slowly building up the pea shooter torchwood combo at the back. And everything was looking good, until the coal miners showed up and threw everything away. This didn't matter though, as I made it to the end anyway. And in day 25, who? A you lot. You'd think I'd struggle with such limited plant choices, but I managed to beat the whole level with literally sunflower and cactus. Why was this level so much easier than everything else? And it appeared the duo tag team theme carried out into day 26 as well, with Chomper and Pea Shooter managing to solo the whole of the level, which unlocked the guy in the middle of the Canada flag. Day 27. Oh. Who are you? Chomper, you greedy eggplant. This old geezer holding that thing from the Minecraft movie prays to Jesus before using his holy powers to burn my plants to the ground. That's not very Jesus-like. They aren't much of a threat as long as you take them out before they start doing the sun dance, which concluded the level with only six plants remaining alive on the board. An intense battle occurred today. Day 28. I mean... At least we got sunflower this time. Using my iceberg strats from last time, I just planted sunflower whenever the zombies came close, which made this level ridiculously easy. I would say that sunflower solos, but at the very end, these imps set up shop way at the back over here, which means that I'm forever stuck with these zombies endlessly walking into these boulders and just murdering themselves. Look, this is the gameplay footage sped up by 10 times. I don't even have to play the game anymore. And as much as it is funny, I can't destroy these tents as the last time I checked, sunflower doesn't have a gun. So there's literally no way to beat this gimmick level unless I was able to fire off these lawnmowers to take them out. Technically, I'd say that I've won this level because if I were Dave, my lawyer has advised me to not finish this joke. Day 29. Snapdagon. Day 30. We're not done yet. Protect Dave's slime mold pissing waste of space. With such limited space, I had to think carefully of what to play. What did you expect? Day 31. We've been here for a whole month. A month in the racist city. And what plants do we get? A nice charcuterie board of ass. But after all that rubbish we had to fight through, we finally arrived at day 32. That line is getting worse every time. Boss fight time. Do we have a chance to beat Zomboss with Garden Warfare plants? Ah. Typical. But after 32 days of crap, we took out Zomboss in his hot air balloon, and he dropped the key to the far future. But that'll have to be for next time, as we beat the lost city with only Garden Warfare plants. Please like the video if you want to see us take on far future, and make sure to subscribe to help me beat Ghost Place to 100,000 subscribers. Did- did you do it? Okay, thank you.